Well, this is my team, not Bruce's team, but we talk all the time. But you don't jumpstart by asking a former coach what to do. We have our own things to deal with, and we understand that. We've been with Bruce long enough to know what he wants, but they've been with me long enough to know what I want. So we're working towards that, and we'll get through it. We want to score. I want big plays, too. But you don't chase them just to chase them. There are parts within the game in which you have to take them and hope they have come through and calculatedly come through. Obviously, we have different players than we had last year, and we got to approach things a little differently and find out what works best for us this year, not last year and two years ago. Lineup's completely different. Gronk's gone, AB's gone, Marpet's gone, Ryan's down. We got different people to adjust to different things, so you can't really compare and say, we're going to do what we did last year, this year, when the guys are different. You know, it's funny when you hear him say former coach. Well, it's not like you're calling up John Gruden. The guy's still in the building. That's what makes this arrangement even more awkward. It's great if everything's working well. But when things aren't working well and you still have access to Bruce Arians, he's still on the payroll. He's still got an office. He's still around. And your attitude is, I'm not going to seek out his inputters or advice because he's the former coach and this is my team. It, ju it just it highlights, Chris, how things like this typically don't work. That if the coach is gone, he needs to be gone. The coach is gone, but he's still there. But I'm not going to rely on him because, you know, it undermines the current coach. That's really what's going on here. Yeah, You don't want the players to be confused about who's coaching the team. And that was one of my concerns from the get-go. Yeah, I know Arians it was, Mike. act like he still runs the place. Right. And now we're asking Todd Bowles if he's going to let Bruce Arians kind of run the place again. Yeah, and it's the second time in six weeks we're talking about Bruce Arians as one of the, like, the main subjects of the Bucks, right? Just like we were in the Saints game and him on the sidelines there. I know that I, I'm with you, and I know you've said that from the get-go, and you're right. I mean, there, there's no question about it. You know, I find it like a little disrespectful to even ask Todd Bowles that type of stuff, and to a degree, I mean, it's disrespectful. It is. But he's there. I that's know. That's the problem. That's the problem. They've created the scenario where right. he's there. If he's gone, if he was not still with the team, that question doesn't get asked. Yeah, I, I 100% agree with you there. And, 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 you know, Bruce, I'm sure, has given his two cents about, you know, overall the offense. But to say, like, hey, hey, Todd, you think you let Bruce, you know, draw up some plays this week? I mean, I don't think Bruce is – you know, he's not watching the film of their team on a day-by-day -day basis, practice, all of that, who they're playing. You know, he sounds like he's evaluating – the guys on their team as players and helping out Jason Light that way and, you know, maybe scouting some other teams and guys that might be free agents and, you know, when he's on the field and pregame, checking them out. Uh, it, it, it's loose that way. But to think that, oh, well, yeah, he's going to get back involved in, like, the third down package on a, on a Thursday evening and start game planning, yeah, it's a little disrespectful to Todd Bowles and Byron Leftwich. But you're right, the circumstances themselves just – lead you to ask that question and that's where it is weird and i and and to your point mike you got me thinking now i you hmm, i don't i can't remember one that kind of shook out like this that was ever successful i'm trying to think if there's anything there that i can remember but you're you're right this is a this is uh usually a recipe for not good not good things to happen yeah i i just feel like the effort to hold the band together for one last run in football it it the last run's already happened. Yeah, if you're, right. If you're, right. you know, if you're inclined, like Brett Favre, 2010, they went down to Mississippi and basically hogtied him and put him on the plane and brought him back to Minnesota for one last year. Yeah. Like, yeah. The, the 2009 should have been it. Right. The one last year ended up being a mistake. And I feel like this one last year for Tom Brady with Bruce Arians out because Arians would have been the coach. If Tom Brady hadn't come back, folks, he wasn't going to step up. I'm sorry. I know. I know. He, he was going to be the coach. It was March. He was going to be. It was late March. He was going to be the coach of the team until Tom Brady came back, period. Uh, so this idea to do whatever we have to do, bend over backwards to give Tom whatever he wants, let him take off for 11 days in camp, let him take off on a Friday night and skip work on Saturday, whatever Tom wants, to put asses in the seats. It's another example of where business – supersedes integrity of the game, winning as many games as possible. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. We won a Super Bowl a couple years ago. But the, the, the stadium's going to be sold out more often than not if we have Tom Brady on the team. And they, they kind of sold their souls a little bit yeah. to keep Tom Brady around. And they've created this mess. And, and, hey, they could still win the Super Bowl again. They're 3-3. Three and three. 
Maybe Tom Brady decides, screw it. I- I'm going to accept 11 weeks of military deployment and go all in. And I suspect they're going to kick the crap out of the Panthers this weekend. I think this is a bad, this is a bad time to be playing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers because Tom Brady, if he's ever going to react, Chris, and internalize the criticism that he's absorbed this week for what happened over the weekend, it's going to be now. And he's going to come out if he's capable. This is going to be a great litmus test. Is he capable? Because he's never going to be more motivated than he will be this weekend to erase the memory of what happened in Pittsburgh. Yeah, I, I, I don't disagree with what you're saying there. I mean, this is, we'll see. This, this is definitely a game where, you know, how they play, I think will, you know, give us a feeling of what to look forward to the rest of the year. If it's like, Man, you know, they won by seven or 10, and it kind of, it's like, I think it's official. Like, no, this is just who they are this year. They're just not a great team, and I don't know if it's going to happen. And I'm getting close to that. And not to say that they can't get to the playoffs, but I just don't look at it and go, you know, before the year, you're thinking, hey, this is a team that's in the running for the number one seed, number two seed, that type of football team. As of right now, you know, I look at them and just go, yeah, they might win the division because the division's not all that great. But they'll be the number four seed. They'll be the worst of the division winners. Or they're certainly not going to be a team we look at to go, oh, wow, watch out for the Bucks. Hey. So this will be a big week this week. They won the Super Bowl as the four seed. So, But they got hot at the end no. of the year. Yeah, and they did. Wait, 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 wait. No. Wait, what year did they? They were not the four seed. They were a wild they card because the, the Saints won the division. Yeah, you're right. Right. You're right. So, absolutely right. They, they were the five seed. Right. They won the Super Bowl as the five seed, so my argument's even stronger. My mistake makes my argument stronger. They were the five seed, not the four seed. They had to go to Washington and play the four seed. They were right. on the road the whole way. So they, they were seven and five after 12 games that year. So they can still. But, but th- this is the ultimate, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak test. Because mm. the spirit is going to be as willing as it's ever going to be this weekend against the Panthers after what happened in Pittsburgh. We'll see if they can physically do it, if Tom can physically do it against a still pretty good Panthers defense. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.